you're going to see the, the environment that we're in here in Maysville, Colorado, uh, and some of the challenges that law enforcement is going to face in looking for a missing person. I mean, this is some of the thickest um, mountainous brush area that I've ever seen in my entire life. So I'll take you for a little walk so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm right off the main road here where Suzanne and Barry Morphew live right here out of outside of Maysville, Colorado. Sheriff jumping in from Fox 20. Hey, panel, we're not having high tea at Windsor Palace. Okay, so jump in if you have a thought. So, Lauren Sharf, um, let me bounce off what Joe Scott Morgan just said. Joe Scott, just stop everything. Cadaver dogs can pick up a scent of a dead body, even if it's underwater. This is a lightning round, so you can just answer yes or no. Isn't that true, Joe Scott? Yes, that is true. Yes or no? You don't need to expound. Uh, Joe Scott Morgan, isn't it true that cadaver dogs can pick up the scent of human remains under snow? Isn't that true? Yes, it is true. Joe Scott, isn't it true that cadaver dogs did hit in multiple places Around the time of Suzanne Morphew's disappearance. Yes, that is and true. And isn't it also true that if they hit on human remain scent at the time of her disappearance, it could also indicate her body had been there and was moved, does it not? Yes, that is true. So isn't it within the realm of possibility that her body had been, her dead body had been at those locations where cadaver dogs hit and then was moved to a more remote location. Isn't that possible? It's within the realm of possibility. 
Lauren Scharf, that is the theory on which I'm hanging my hat. I think that's what happened. Her body was moved. Well, even in the arrest affidavit, one of the investigators said that they saw like a footprint on the bobcat bucket um but they didn't uh take a photograph or um or a cast of the bucket uh but the invest they did note it in the arrest affidavit that there was a bare footprint like someone's bare you know footprint in the bucket of the bobcat you can see the house in the background that house over there is the Morpheus house. And we're going to start making our way down that way to see if we can talk to Barry. See if he's home, if he's taking visitors, see what's going on. Stay with us, everybody. Okay, well, it's still sprinkling, but I'm gonna start making my way down this road right here. Um, so hopefully the rain kind of lets up a little bit, but uh, we're still gonna we're still gonna go. Um, it looks like that truck right there was from Indiana. That might have been Barry Morphy right there, as a matter of fact. So stay with us. We'll find out. Okay, as we're walking along, we see this is where they had the police tape. This is where they tore it off. That was the police line, do not cross. So they just recently turned the house back over to the family. And I do believe that was Barry that just drove by in that silver truck. It did have Indiana license plates, and that's where they're from. So I'm going to go up and see if I could talk to him. Stay with us. Okay, so here we have some more police line. Do not cross. Tape in the tree right here. This would have been the bike path. This is the bike path right here that Suzanne Morphew took. So this is where she disappeared and the rain is coming down and I just saw Barry Morphew pass by. He had no shirt on, he was soaking wet and it looked like he was frantic. So I'm gonna go up here and see if I can talk to him. So stay with us, this is getting pretty crazy that there aren't more people out here searching. So this is, I believe this is Foose's Creek right here. And uh, from what I heard that they found her bike somewhere around here leaning up against a tree. I don't know which tree. And I don't know if that's 100% true or not. But. But this is literally right below her house and I don't know. It's hard to know what to believe. Give up the ghost, give up the ghost, stop the haunting baby. 